to be drunk with wine? Well, why can't we drink some wine with our meals? And why can't we drink a beer when we want to? Because when you have Jesus, you don't want that stuff. I mean, if I got the real thing, why would I want it? If I got steak and shrimp, why would I want to go to Taco Bell? Right? You with me? Why don't I want to go somewhere for a free meal at the soup kitchen when I got lobster and shrimp and, and, and steak, man, with the bacon wrapped around it? Why would I want to go get something like that? You with me? When you have Jesus in your life and in your heart, you don't need no more beer. It's not going to be an issue. See, if there's, if, if, see, you're like a woman with the issue of blood. You got a bunch of issues. Well, why can't I do this? Why can't I smoke? You with me? Why can't I drink? Why can't I, uh, you know, hook up? I have needs. What you need to do is get saved and give your life to Jesus. And let him come in and have total control and dominion over your mind, your body, your spirit. You with me? And he'll give you the victory. You with me? When he hooks you up, you're going to be hooked up with, with something that's awesome. And not something you're going to mess up or that's going to mess up your walk with God. You with me? We're willing to look, you know, just because a person on the outward, they look nice or, or something like that. You have no concern about their condition and their heart. You with me? Amen. Yes. And, and you know what I mean? We need to we need to get get you know you need to hook up with Jesus. Yeah. You need to spend some time with, with the presence of the Lord. Bow that knee in his presence. Yeah. Not just on Sunday mornings. Yeah. Come on, man. He's looking for a wife, not a girlfriend yeah. in a one night stand. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. That didn't go over too good. Yeah. Some of you still don't learn. You're still trying to hold on to your, your past and still trying to go on with your future and you're confused. That's all you're going to be is confused and God's not the author of confusion. Why am I still going through this? Why am I feeling like this? Why, why are you still having to let go? You're still holding on to Rico's number there. Come on. Amen. Huh? Amen. <laughs> Amen. You got to let go of those things. Let go of them, people. Let them loose. You're like a, I'm your puppet. Pull my little string and I'll sing you a song. I'm your puppet. You, you still don't cut these guys loose, man. Don't cut these chicks loose in your life. You're still trying to play the field. You with me? Don't you know when you come to the Lord, man, you play, I mean, you're hooked up with Him. You with me? It's a relationship now. When you come to Jesus, you're not adding Him to the bunch of mess you already have. You're coming, laying everything down, saying, I'm dead. That person you knew there, that, that old man, that one that liked to do all these things, he's dead right now. And that new man is coming out from the grave. He's coming alive. And I'm letting God put new stuff in me. Fill me up. You hear me? Get the word inside your heart. Pray. Seek, your, seek the face of God. Come to church every time there's the doors open. Come to prayer. You hear me? On Monday and Friday nights at 6 o'clock. Come seek the face of God. You with me? And I know not everybody will do it, but, them, but you're the ones that are going to miss out. Some of you don't take advantage of prayer. You take it for granted. Oh, I pray at home. Nobody tells me nothing. You don't even pray. Your prayer's not effective. Your family's still the same. Come on, church. you got to learn to plug in and start being obedient and doing the things that are there with the right heart. You watch God bless you. Watch God use you. You with me? I don't know about you. I don't want the old no more. I want what God has fresh every morning. I don't want that two-day-old blessing or that week-old bread. I want some fresh paper every morning right there in His presence. Something new. Today's a new day. Yesterday's gone. Let God do something new. Let Him do something fresh. Throw out the way you think. Cast down the imaginations while I think. That's your problem. You think. He said in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, he says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. But in everything, somebody say everything. everything. Now, what does everything mean? Everything. Just, just like what you want to do? No. Some of you need to get that, especially you new hopers. Amen. Some of you guys, you, you do what you want to do, right. and you think you're blessed. Right. You with me? And you, you, well, I didn't feel like doing that. Right. Amen. 
You're not dead yet. You're still walking in the past. You're still walking in your old nature. And you're never going to get the victory until you start learning to be obedient in the small things. I don't feel like it, therefore I'm going to run after it. You with me? You're still thinking. You're still feeling. You're still not dead yet. A dead corpse can't feel nothing. A dead corpse don't know whether you, you were made to do the bathrooms two weeks in a row or not. They just do it. Because they just said, I'm serving the Lord. You with me? Yeah, I'm going into the grateful part. Right. Well, sister, she didn't even say hi. She didn't even look at me. A dead corpse, I could walk back. Come on. <laughs> and he, he's That's right. smile. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, that hurt my feelings. <laughs> How old are you in God now? Oh, I mean, if you're two weeks old, you just got saved. Stick around with me for a while. And you'll be like, Shale. You'll be, you'll be solid for Jesus. I've been mean, around our church for already a while. I feel hurt. Oh my God! You need to die already. You need to get saved and die at this altar. That's what this altar is. That's what your prayer altar is, even if it's by your bed in the morning or in the evening or whenever it is or when you're tempted to go get high or tempted to call that number. You kneel down by your bed there and you die to yourselves and not what I want, Jesus, what you want. God, I want to do this, but I'm not, Lord, because God, you've given me the strength. He said, pray that you enter not into temptation. In other words, pray that you don't fall into sin again. He said, guess what? Your spirit right now, amen, Pastor. Amen. He said, but you know when you walk out those doors, that old dead flesh you carry with you, like, yeah, but I'm hurting. <laughs> oh, not you. I'm sorry. I think I'm still in Vegas or something. Sin City, Pueblo, we're so sunk. So holy. You don't realize you got that dead man still with you. Man. You with me? And you need to die already. You need to cut it loose. You need to, to, to crucify that flesh at that altar. Even if it is in your closet. You with me? Even if you got to make room in your closet, get rid of all them clothes, make room there. But you get in there and you shut that door and nobody knows you're in there and in there you're saying, God, kill this flesh already. Yeah. My flesh wants to run out to the, to the bar. My flesh wants to go down that girl's house. My flesh wants to, you know what I mean, go out and sell some drugs, get money. So, you know what I mean, I can feel good about myself. You'll feel good in there. Get in there when you die. You'll be like, you know what? I don't even feel no more. I don't care about my rags. I don't care about walking. I don't care if I ain't got a car or a job. I'm going to seek the Lord with all my heart. Because I'm dead and I don't feel that stuff. He's Paul said, I crucify the flesh. I nailed it to the cross every day. A daily sacrifice. You with me? It ain't a Sunday sacrifice, church. God's not pleased with sacrifice. He's pleased with obedience. Come on, we hope for you to die, man. You still got to die. Right, amen. You with me? Right. And you're right because it's a daily man. crucifixion. It's a daily laying right. yourself on that altar man. saying, God, I don't, I'm not going to be offended no more. Right. Don't you realize Satan has a hold of you oh, when you're offended? Yeah. Don't you realize that right now? If you're not, if you're just new, listen to what I'm saying. Yeah. Go around offended at everybody because they don't on, say this or that. People are talking smack on. about me every day. Right. I just heard yesterday's people, you know, talking smack, saying this, we never liked them, and all this stuff, and I was like, Shh. I mean, you know, if yeah. you feel that way, come and ask me, do you right. like me? Amen. <laughs> and if I don't, I'll tell you, not really. <laughs> but don't go talking smack, yeah. but they yeah. do it anyway, so yeah. I got to, I learn, you know, hey, whatever. Man. Right. Whatever, I love you still. Amen. Because God, agape loves an unconditional Amen. love. Agape loves a forgiving love. It's a, it's you know what? I don't care what you do to me. I still love you. Amen. See, that's the way Jesus is. Aren't you supposed to be a Christian? Amen. God bless three cops. Maybe some of you don't realize you're supposed to be Christ-like, not mom-like, not husband-like. You with me? Christ-like. You with me? Not fleshly. Well, they do it over there, and she does it. Right, amen. 
And you still haven't grown up. You still yeah. haven't learned the simple things. And you know what? This is a this is a walk. He said, the road to heaven is narrow, bro. For some, it's a little bit wider. Don't <laughs> <laughs> be looking at me. <laughs> And for some of you, it's, it's narrow, narrow work. Yeah. But each one, you know what I mean? There's not room for me and my wife. Yeah, right. She's got her own narrow path. I got my own narrow path. Yeah. Yes, he said, you want to go to hell? The road is narrow. I mean, yeah, my homies, my yeah. dogs, my rukas, and, yeah. and, and all my, yeah. you know, my low riders and all this stuff, man. She, it's full. You yeah. don't have all your friends. Yeah. But he yeah. said, the road to heaven is narrow. Amen. Your spouse Amen. won't be on there with you. So some of you are looking to your spouse yeah. for encouragement and, ex and, 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 and acceptance and all this stuff. And God says, that's why you're in the condition you are. Right. You Amen. still haven't let me be Lord of your life. They're Lord of your life. Amen. You've got to get Amen. this, man. Amen. You've got to let Jesus be Lord of your life. Because if he is, I don't care what your husband does, you'll be like, man, you know what? I love Jesus. That's right, amen. He's yeah. drinking, he's amen. smoking. Oh, thank God you're saved. Can you can take him to the throne of God. Amen. Every day you can lift him up to God. So every God touch him. Amen. Not that borracho perdido. <laughs> this and that and all this stuff. And you're complaining. And God's, God's like, dude, I mean, have you ever been around complainers? Yeah. They get on my nerves. Yes, man. They say, why don't you be quiet? Why don't you say something good for a while? All you got is negative, and you walk away feeling dirty. Yeah. Right, you with me? Yeah. I mean, how do you think God feels? He probably put an angel with fiery <laughs> swords and everything. Says, Keep them away from me. <laughs> I'm gonna, they got me all discouraged. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. You're able to bring them to the throne of God. Oh, your children yeah. to the your, like Isaac. You lay them at that altar. Oh Lord. Yeah. Oh Jesus. Yeah. You died in His place, Lord. But He didn't have to die. Yeah. Some of you don't even know it. Your family's on their way to hell. They're right. dying today. Right. Every pill they take, every every uh, your heroin they shoot in their veins, every drink they drink. You know what I mean? They're on their way to hell, and all we can do is complain. Say, I don't see a change. Right. I prayed Amen. once and it didn't work. Amen. Right. Don't realize you're that priest to take them to the throne yeah. of God yeah. every morning. Job yeah. said, I pray for my children every day because they, you know them, they probably sin against God. Yeah. But he took him to the throne of God every day. Yeah. You ought to thank God for that, that, that he saved you. That's right, amen. You with me? Amen. So that you can be that intercessor for your family right. and your children. Amen. You with me? Amen. Not looking at the wrong, not looking at the bad. That's right. right. Looking at God. Yes. What an awesome yeah. God you are. Yeah. You saved me. Yeah. I thank you, my children are coming in. I don't know why. Yeah. I don't know how. Yeah. Seems like they're getting worse and worse, and the devil said they are. Yeah. They are, they're worse, they're bad. Yeah. They're they're this and they're that. That ought to make you pray more, yeah. not complain more, not yeah. you with me? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. It's time that we get in the presence yeah. of God and start seeking him for who he yeah. is. You with me? Instead of just, just letting life overtake you. Amen. You with me? I'll say this and I'll stop because this is my introduction. <laughs> Some of you are losing the things God has given you because of your lack of faith. Amen. I'm tired of seeing, especially our church, God does something good in your life in the services. Like say for instance last Sunday, Amen. I'm here blessed by Pastor Ed. Amen. No, nobody told me anything, or so I don't know anything. So don't say, well, they probably one of the kids went and ran to him and told him. So nobody told me nothing. But the Holy Ghost Man. is that once God blesses you, and then you go on to even after church, or maybe the next day, or whatever it is, the devil attacks you right away. And whatever you got, you, lo you lost. Amen. Don't you realize he's there to take your blessing? Amen. He's there to steal it. Amen. And you've got to, he said, the just shall live by their faith. Amen. The just shall walk by faith, not by sight. Thank you, Jesus. And you're healing. Some of you, I'm tired of seeing you not healed. And maybe you'll go and you'll get healed and then right away you go out and you're, you're not healed in the parking lot. How can that be? Amen. You with me? Amen. By your by your faith. Amen. He said your faith has made you whole. Amen. You with me? 
Amen? Yeah. And, and it's like, we, you know, we're looking for our pain. We're looking for, you know I mean? And then our mouths start opening up yeah. and we start, yeah. you know what I mean? Ask God to save you first before right. you're healed so you'll keep your healing. Right. God, come in and save yeah. my heart. Right. Take this yeah. ugly, nasty heart of mine and save me. Make me pure, Lord. Yeah. Why in your presence? So that when I get my healing, God, oh, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And you know what I mean? And you're able to keep what you got. Yeah. Stop right. looking for the sickness. Stop looking for the symptoms. Yeah. Walk around, you know what I mean? Oh, what is that? I just felt dizzy. What does it say on the internet? You feel dizzy, you're going to die. <laughs> it's, a, it's a brain aneurysm. And, and listen, oh, God, I got a brain aneurysm. Now, Pastor, pray for me. <laughs> walking around defeated, walking around in fear. Amen. No, I think I have cancer. I feel it. <laughs> Where's your faith, church? Where's your faith? Amen. You have the same Bible I have. Amen. You with me? You have the same faith, or you can make it greater than my faith. Amen. You with me? You don't walk around, and, you know, you know, oh, I'm sick again. I'm, I, I don't know, my kids aren't going to change. And listen, now don't you know you're cursing your own self? Right, man. Why don't you speak the word? Right. The Roman centurion says, Jesus, I know this. I have authority. Say the word and my servant will be healed. Don't even have to come to my house. Jesus, just say it from heaven. Amen. Say it, Lord. And you look in your word. A leper came and said, Jesus, a leper. He was dying every day. He's literally falling apart. Their skin would fall off of him. And he said, Jesus, if thou would heal me. He said, if you'll cleanse me, I'll be clean. And Jesus said, I will be clean. He said, the issue is not if I want to heal you. The issue is if you're willing to walk in your healing. The issue is your faith. It's not ever on God. I guess God don't like me. Pastor don't like me. Pastor Susan don't like me. Nobody likes me. I guess I take these pills and overdose. Because nobody likes me. The last pastors didn't like me either. And my husband don't like me. And you with me? Go yeah. oh, oh, down at the altar. Yeah. Give your heart to Jesus. Yeah. You're going to be able to say, well, I can care less if you like me or not. I'm serving Jesus. Yeah. All I care is that I'm a friend of God. Yeah. Yeah. If he likes me, that's all I need. Is it around for you? Who can be against you? Yeah. Stop opening your mouth unless it's to praise God. Yeah. Stop yeah. going by your feelings and start living by faith. Yeah. Well, I don't feel, praise God, I'm going to church. I'm going to prayer. Some of you are so defeated. You just stay at home. And you don't, you don't understand what we're saying. And you think, well, nobody can tell me anything. I'm a Christian. But you're living a defeated life. You've got to learn to take advantage of the things that God has given you. The gifts and the, 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 the blessings that God has given you. You with me? Amen. Every time we come, God shows up. Amen. Why wouldn't you want to be here? Amen. If I was a heroin addict and you said, hey, I got some a fix for you, bro, I'd be there. Amen. Well, I don't know. I don't feel like he likes me. Did you ever ask the drug dealer, Alec, do you like me? Because I just feel this. Something between us that like you don't know. You know. Sure, it's like, here, give me. I love you, man. I love you. Just keep it coming, man. He's like, I love you too. Bring the cash, baby. Bring it back. I'll be here. And we loved our drug dealers more than we loved God. We trusted them. And we, if not, we go find it, man. We find something. Somebody to hook us up. Not us. We're Christians. I'm going to stay home. I'm offended. I'm hurt. You with me? I don't know. I feel like it's like my God. Some of you, you have, I can tell you haven't been at the altar. Try it, man. To tell you haven't been in His presence, even though you come to good services, you're still missing it. You're still missing it. People are around Jesus every day, touching Him, throwing, "Hey, Jesus, I'm with Him. I'm with Him, my Jesus." And Jesus, look, who are you? And people that are hurting and people that are sick coming up and getting blessed. Man. They're getting Man. blessed, they're getting delivered, they're getting healed. And I still, I don't know, I would go follow him, but I'm sick. That's right, that's right, Pastor. Come on now. 
It's time for us to seek the face of God. Man. It's time for us to get real with right. God. Right, man. Hallelujah. It's time for us to get real with God. Isn't that the church over there? Faith. Some of you say you have faith, but you know what faith equals? Obedience. Yeah. You, right. you say you have faith, but you're not obedient right. Right. to the small things, church. Amen. In the small things. Amen. When it comes to things like prayer, when it comes to things, yeah. you're still doing what you want to do right. and still think you're going to walk in the same blessing as those that come? Yeah. Yeah. Those that are really after God, you don't think that we have problems? Right. Yeah. Amen. You don't think that we go through this? We just know how to deal with them. Right. I don't go to the bar. I don't go to the dry. I go to, the pr I go to prayer. Yeah. I go to seek the face of God. I go call on Him. Yeah. You with me? Because yeah. He's worthy. Yeah. He's the answer. Yeah. You stay home with your family and you look at them and they're all jacked yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, and you wonder why you feel all filthy and dirty yeah. and ugly on the inside. It's because you're disobedient and you're trying to tell them how to love Jesus. Because yeah, they say you're going to church too much. Yeah, yeah that's right. Come on. You with yeah, me? Come on, Come on now. Yeah. Oh, you're always at church now. Prayer tonight? Yeah. Gee, babe. Yeah. Come on. Why don't you stay home with me and love me? Well, they never tell you that when the weekends when you're out drinking. When they're gone, I'll be gone. They don't stay with me. But when they're ready to stay home and cuddle, uh -oh. and you wonder why you feel like God's left you? No, you left him. You abandoned him. Hebrews, uh, uh, 10, I think it's 10.25, it says, don't get in the habit of missing church. Right, amen. Some of you got a bad habit of doing that yeah. all the time. Yeah. You miss whenever you feel like it or whenever somebody calls you to a barbecue or to dinner, you're ready to forsake God for a steak. Come on. Come and then you wonder why you're in the condition you are. Man, man I ain't even preaching my message. Come on. Eh? <laughs> this is just an exhortation to you. You with me? Amen. You're willing to to, to, to to stay home and cuddle with Satan so that you know and, and then want to God do something in my marriage. Yeah. You will if you go to church. Right, amen. You will if you'll come to seek the face of God. Who knows? Maybe he'll come to church. Yeah. Maybe she'll come to Christ. Yeah. Maybe those kids will come in here eventually. Yeah. Yeah. They eventually have their way of making it here. Yeah. You with me? Tell our kids, you know, I mean, hey, you know where we'll be. Yeah. yeah. Let's see what time is Sunday. What time? Oh, my parents are at church. Yeah. Yeah. Well, oh, it's prayer night tonight. I forgot you have prayer. Yeah, devil. You're out there running. You get in here and pray. Yeah. yeah. You with me? Yeah. Well, you want a few bucks? I'll be at the church in yeah. prayer. Right. Oh, I'll be at women's ministry. Don't yeah. get me started on women's. Yeah. Yeah. You with me? When the mouse, when the mouse, what is it? When the cat's away, the mice do play. Yeah. Some of you still playing your little games. Yeah. When the when the when the cat's away, you with me? You think because we're away, you can miss church or miss women's or miss prayer? Yeah. You with me? Yeah. You're not hurting me. Yeah. Right. You're not hurting my life. You're hurting you. Yeah. And if you don't watch it, you're gonna backslide. Yeah. And I don't want that for you. Yeah. You with me? I don't care who comes. I don't care what she's doing. Well, she didn't go to women's. So you're still a follower. Yeah. You're not a follower of Christ. You're still a follower of people. Yeah. Don't you realize them people have probably more issues than you? Yeah. They're worse off than you and you're trying to follow their lead? Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. Follow the example of your leaders and your yeah. pastors. Yeah. You with me? I don't care who else it is. What is Pastor Vince and Susan doing? That's where I want to be. Right. I don't care what anybody else does. I want to be there. Yeah. I want to follow their lead. And if they said I needed to be here, I need to be here. Right. You with me? Stop playing your games. Because yeah. you're going to get hurt. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. And you'll never be used by God playing those little games. Yeah. Never. Yeah. God don't use play. Would you use somebody like that? Yeah. That worked for you? And yet you didn't know if they'd be working or they called off when you weren't there? Yeah. Why? Because they knew you wouldn't be there? And maybe he won't find out. I know everything. Amen. The Holy Ghost is a snitch. <laughs> you with me? Amen. Amen. See, Paul said, you obey in my presence, but also is more than in when I'm gone. Amen. You with me? Love each other. Treat each other Amen. kind. Be on, you know what I mean? Amen. You want to hear things like that when you leave, that your kids are loving each other right. and, and being a blessing, not fighting over position and right. who's doing this yeah. and who's not doing that and yeah. who should do this. And you look and say, oh, God. Yeah. Amen. 
I said, you know what? I give it to the Lord. I'm seeking. I'm doing His will out here. Yeah. Yeah. One of these days, we're going to be at a place where me and her can fly out of here and go do what God and you guys are going to be able to function without any problems. Right, just smooth, like yeah. a motor. Just smooth, smooth. But nobody, you know what I mean? Yeah. You with me? Yeah. Doing exactly what you need to do with the right heart. Yeah. That the disciples are fighting yeah. who yeah. is leader and who's yeah. yeah. not. Or, or, oh. I'm the boss here. Yeah. Take authority. What kind of leadership is that? Yeah. Yeah. You with me? Right. Amen. We're to follow. We're to submit to one another. Right. You with me? Amen. Amen. That, that's what that's what God that's what you want for your children, right? Amen. Oh, what's his name? They're arguing, they're fighting, or they're backbiting, or they're talking about each other, and this and that. As a parent, that you know, it's just like, Shh, man, you ain't happy. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. Why? Because you know that that's the 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 depth of their Christian walk is. Yeah. Jesus said, "Man, you guys are fighting for position, authority. You know, what's wrong, man? When are you gonna grow up?" Yeah, you with me? Yep. It's about being, you know, submitting to one another. See, that's the true leadership. That you're able to submit to one another. It's not that you have authority or that you don't have to listen to anybody but pastor or this and that. That shows the true maturity of your heart. You with me? Amen. Amen. And we're supposed to grow up, be mature. Amen. 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 Do what God called us to do. You with me? And that's when you see it. That's when the test is. You with me? And it's like, you know what? It's time we start passing the test. Not my test, God's test. Because he's the God, I'm not. You with me? Serve him when we're around. Serve him when we're not. That's right, amen. When you go out there, when you're in church, you're, you're having your blessing. And you go out there with your friends and family, and it's like you backslide. Yeah. It's time we grow up. It's time we get real with God. How are you ever going to save them if you act like a heathen among them? How are you ever going to save them if you're talking as dumb as they are and you're never preaching the gospel to them? Well, you're going to church again? Yeah, let me tell you why. Instead of, yeah, well, uh, you just sit there and let them just bash you as a Christian. You just, you know, you, you don't open your mouth then, but let somebody at church tell you something. You'll start cussing and everything. Come on now. Amen. Praise the Lord. Not too long. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. But this is what's going to cause you to be deep. To get your roots deep as a Christian. You with me? And it's in the time of, of the drought that the, deep, that the roots you have don't give up and quit and die. They go deeper for water. They go deeper for water and God. And sometimes those of you that are here that feel like maybe God is left, could it be that he's just trying to see if you'll seek him even more? Amen. You with me? Yeah. Not just at church or not just at prayer, whatever yeah. we do here, but in your own time, you're right. seeking the face yeah. of God. You're getting the word inside of you so that you, you'll you grow. Yeah. You with me? Right. You'll become that person that God can use out there. Yeah. In here is that. I mean, it's good. We need to use gifts and stuff for the church, but out there in your workplace, that's where I've been most effective. Yeah. Out there on the streets and yeah. uh, telling people and handing the flyers and yeah. going from door to door. You know what I mean? These people in this community know our church, and it's not because of me on Sunday mornings preaching. Right. Because I have an awesome, godly wife who takes your children and teaches them how to evangelize in the evenings all over this community, knocking on doors and saying, All right, Nathan, come here. You're going to pray for this person who's sick. Yeah. All right, Jordan, you witness to him and tell him why we're here. Yeah. I went with him one day over here to the apartments, and I seen Oscar. Man. Go to doors knocking. Hey, we're from New Hope Ministries. We want to invite you. And I'm like, wow, well, check it out. If I put some of you in there, you'd be like, uh, uh. And our children are, are out there inviting people to Christ, inviting people to come to church. And they know how to do it. It blew me away. I was like, check these dudes out. I thought I would have to speak for them, and they tore me out. I said, I'll just be over here. <laughs> All offended. <laughs> No, that's, that's what I live for, is to see our kids especially rise up and do what God's talking to do. You know what I mean? 
Amen. That was a blessing and an yeah. honor for me. One, to go preach the gospel, but two, to have my children with me. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. I can take them with me to see what God's doing in their yeah. lives, too. Yeah. Yeah. Use them gifts. Yeah. Took Lisa with me in Vegas and LA, and she, you know, I caused her to, you know, get up there and play. She's like, "Hey, Dad, I, you know, I have to practice. I have to practice." See, some of you thing is you got gifts, but they right. just stored like in the closet somewhere over there. That's right, come on. And I'm telling you, it's time to get them gifts yeah. out. Yeah. Thanks to Lord. Yeah. Start practicing. Yeah. Start praying. Yeah. That old Bible that's stuffed under your seat, all right. jacked up. Yeah. Take it out, man. And, Press it down flat and start to open it and then read the letters and stuff. Put the words together, read the phrases and start saying, God, use me. Use me to preach your gospel. Use me out there, God, in this world. Use the gifts. Use the I wish I could do that. I, I always wanted to do that. And that's your life story. Amen. I always wanted to do that. Right, amen. And you're going to be in a casket, and your on your headstone is going to say, "I always wanted to do that." <laughs> Come on. <laughs> no, mine's going to say, "Been there, done that." <laughs> Please. Amen. 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 <laughs> Well, if I had money, I would too. Believe me, we didn't go with money. We stepped out in faith, man. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah. well, if I had money, I would do this and I would do that. Listen, all you got to do is start sharing your vision with people. Right people will say, hey, what can I do? What if I was to give you the paper to do your trial? What if I was to, here's $10, make you some more of those things. That I, I was really blessed. You're, you know what I mean? Can I take you to yeah. life? Here's a new buy you a hamburger. So, you know, help you on your Try way. Like, oh, praise God. See, as you go, they'll, they'll, they'll bless you. God, Try his blessings are like ahead of you. You know, when you go, they're not going to face any of still anymore. Yeah. I wish I could. Right, and you get money and it goes to bills and all yeah. this. And you think that that's your income. Right. You're, you're mistaken, yeah. man. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. You have to plug into God. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Some of you have done it before. And you, you know, that's what I told them in New Mexico. I said, your gifts, you know what I mean? Your testimony is not who I am. In 19, you see that, I, my books and stuff back there? I got the little books, I got CDs, I got tapes. Some of you, you know what I mean? I still see a whole thing. I thought I'd be out by now. Well, no. uh, I didn't have five bucks. If it was dope, you'd have five bucks. Right. Come on now. Hey, man, you go hustle. You go find five bucks. Hey, I got to get that one. I gotta get that. I gotta yeah. see what happened in my pastor's right, life. Man. And you know, I won't buy three. I won't give because my cousin, he's in the joint. And take the staples out and mail it to him. Yeah. Some lady in New Mexico said five of those, five books for five of her sons in the yeah. New, Mexi New Mexico, or was it oh, LA? 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 In LA. Yeah. LA prisons. My book's going already in the prisons of Los yeah. Angeles. Yeah. So, oh, I mean, this, that's nice. She said, yeah. five. I got five sons. That's faith. Yeah. That's faith. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And take advantage of these of these things in your life. Yeah. You with me? Don't just pass the case by again and again and right. again. But you have your five for Taco Bell after. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you with me? Right. Amen. Amen. But uh, you know, for, for anyway, tonight, tonight I want to, I want to have tonight. Uh, uh, I'm gonna preach and stuff, but tonight I'm gonna give my wife opportunity to share some about the trip and maybe Naomi, Julio, whoever you know, what I mean about the the trip that we were on, and just share some of the stuff that God did tonight, yeah. Amen. About what uh, about our trip and some of the things that I saw even on this yeah. the, the trip that the Lord put in my heart, yeah. you know what I mean, for, for our lives and for this church, yeah. amen. amen, and believe me when I tell you this, you were in my prayers every day, yeah. praying for you, that God would somehow speak to you and touch you and move in your heart, yeah. you with me, that yeah. this wouldn't be a Sunday thing for you, right. you know, like going to a party, and, yeah. and but the party's over, no, this would be, you'd be walking in a party, yeah. you'd be living in a party, you'd be, you'd be living in Ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party because the Holy Ghost party don't. Stop. <laughs> we don't quit here. Man. You will know, take your folders and look inside of there and read my daughter Naomi's uh, yeah. a thing she wrote about the trip, reading Alicia's. Yeah. But I think Alicia in there said something yeah. about that. Like, man, with the Diaz, man, it's always a party. We're always <laughs> on, preaching, going, doing something. Yeah. With me? Some people say, man, they can't hang with this church. 
They want just Sundays only. I told them, I said, were you a heroin addict on Sundays only? That's right, come on. How many of you, many of you dealt with drugs or pills in your life? What, what did you do it on Sundays from 10 to 12 on? <laughs> or didn't it overtake your life? Right, amen. Alcoholics. Yeah. Were you an alcoholic just, yeah. just party on Sundays yeah. from 10 to 12? And then no. that was it. The rest of the week you were, uh, you know, I was there working and doing your job. A weekend warrior, I called no. him. I told him I was a drunk every day. Yeah. Every day I was looking for somewhere to go drink. I was looking for drugs to take, stuff to smoke. I was looking for, you know, things mindless to get involved in. Every day. It overtook my life. I couldn't even have a regular job. You with me? I couldn't live a job. I was always looking for something. And I said, and then we get saved. And it's like, see you next Sunday. How are you going to tell a drug addict that? Right. You with me? Right, man. I mean, you get addicted to Jesus, brother uh, uh, Robert. We're, we're addicted every day. You say, "Oh, I got it. Where can I go? Can I go to prayer discipleship? What can I do for that? I need another touch. I need another drink from the well of God. I need some food, some manna from heaven. I need something in my spirit, man. I need to hear another message because I'm addicted to something like." Jeez, hold on, man. Why? Because you're dead and cold and stale already. And you're looking and you get offended because they're going, Why, what do they think they are? Gee, they just barely started coming to church and look at them now. Why? Because they're dead, Robert. They're dead in their, in their, in their, in their, in their salvation. It's stale and old and all it is is like the tombstone there. With dead men on the inside. Once we're saved, but now they're dead. I don't want to be like that, man. I want to be like them dead ones. I'll be like the one when Jesus rose from the dead, or, or when the, when he died, the earth shook, and the and the Bible says that the graves, some graves, it was so powerful, graves started opening, people just shot up. And like, Whoa, check it out, man! I was I was dead. I'm alive now. They ran into the cities and they were telling me I was dead. That's your revival here. That's what we bring to the church is revival. I don't care what's over your doorpost. You with me? We're here to revive you, okay? I'm Are you saying I don't have faith? You with me? Yes. Come on, Pastor. Amen. We need to stir that faith up. Stir that faith up. I'll tell you, for those of you who ever, I don't know, we have, we, they ask, they've been asking, when are we going camping? When are we going camping? Because we, in May, for Labor Day, we go Memorial, a, Memorial, Day. Memorial Day, we go for a three day thing in the mountains and we go camping and we have such a blast. Yeah. But the thing is, when it starts getting cold, we put the fire on. Yeah. And it's constantly, hey, before we put the fire, let's all go, man, come on. Ladies are cooking. Let's get out there and go find wood. Yeah. We gotta provide for that fire tonight. It's gonna be nice. Yeah. You're there by the fire. Add some more wood. It's getting smaller. Yeah. It's going out. Put some more wood in there. And the kids, our kids, you don't have to tell them that they got a pile like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, hey, that's too much wood. I'm gonna burn Smokey. What's his name? Smokey the bear. Smokey the bear out, man. <laughs> But you got to keep adding wood. And some of your fires, are they're just embers of what used to be. You can tell. Oh, let's see. Oh, it's still warm. There was a fire here two days ago. <laughs> That's where some of you are. By Friday, it's like, oh, no, it's cold. It's out. Can't wait till Sunday. <laughs> Sunday, you gotta come in here. Some of you, man, we gotta be cheerleaders and all this stuff because you're just dead. Yeah. Just like put new wood and, and lay, you know, and then put even gas to help burn them. Yeah. There you are yeah. By Monday, it starts to go down with no more wood, no more prayer, nothing, man. But you know what I mean? Women, yeah, forget fine. it. You're all cold. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> But anyway, welcome to New Hope Ministry. <laughs> Pastor Nathan is here. Amen. Amen. You all ready to give to the Lord this morning? 
Jesus, amen. Amen. Open up your Bibles, if you would, amen, to Psalms 106. Amen. Uh, just a reminder for the men, the men's retreat, March 22nd, amen. Uh, we need a deposit by next Sunday of $50. We know you're serious and that you're going, amen. So get your money in, amen. We need $50, amen. Yeah, I'll take it right now, amen. Uh, we got to make sure that our place is stayed, amen. We want to get up there and have no place to sleep, amen. So turn in your money, amen. Psalms 106, or actually 105, my bad. Uh, verse 37, amen. The children of Israel, amen, they were in a place of bondage. Amen. They were in a place of, of poverty. Amen. They were slaves. Amen. They, they worked. And it seemed like everything they worked for, amen, went to the cause of the Egyptians. Amen. But when the Lord comes into your life, amen, he comes and he sets you free. Amen. And in verse 37, he says, he brought them forth also, amen, out of bondage, out of slavery, out of poverty. Amen. And he brought them out with silver and gold. Amen. Somebody say silver and gold. Amen. They had, didn't have that. They, they, they weren't getting paid to do what they had, were doing. Amen. They were being forced. Amen. But God turned it around. Amen. He turned it around and when they came out, amen, they came out with silver and with gold. Amen. He says, and there was not one feeble person among their tribes. And Egypt was glad when they departed. They gave them the gold. They gave them the silver for fear of them fell upon them. Amen. The Lord wants us to be blessed and He wants us to prosper, amen. When He brings us out of our poverty, brings us out of our sin, amen, He wants us to prosper, amen. And He gives us a principle, amen, to prosper. He gives us a principle to be blessed, amen. And it's in our ability and our willingness to give unto the Lord, amen. See, the, uh, the Israelites didn't have anything, amen, but God turned it around for them, amen. In your lives, God wants to turn your life around. Your situation, your poverty, amen, your struggle, amen, that you're going through, amen. But it's in one key, amen. You read all the way down in verse 45. He says, he gave them the lands, he gave them the heathen, he gave them the inheritance, amen, and the labor of the people, amen, in verse 45, that they might observe his statutes and keep his laws. Praise ye the Lord, amen. God wants to turn your situation around for a reason, amen. But it's going to take your obedience to do what God's asked you to do. Amen. Amen. He can't bless you if you're not obedient. Amen. Amen. And that's why we give our tithe and our offering. Amen. And so many of us, we may say, you know what, but yeah, I don't have. Yeah, I'm struggling. I'm trying to make it. I, I depend on the government or, you know, I, I depend on this. And, and I only got my little check. It's all I got. That's all God wants, amen, amen. is to be faithful with that little, amen. If you get a dollar during the week, it don't matter if you're selling cans, amen. You sell a bunch of cans and that's all you got. Amen. Be faithful with the little that God has blessed you with. Say, God, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to be Amen. faithful in this. And see if God don't turn your situation around. Amen. 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 The Bible says, prove me and test me in this. Amen. Be faithful to your tithes and offerings and see if I won't open the windows of heaven and pour out such a blessing on you that you'll not have room enough to receive. Your wallet won't be fat enough. Amen. Amen. You might get a new one. Amen. Because the Lord wants to bless you. Amen. But you got to be willing to be faithful in the little. You can't wait till you got a lot of money and say, okay, now I'll be faithful. You got to be right where you're at. Amen. So we give our, we give our kids a dollar. Go ahead, go buy candy. We, we, we're always giving money out to Walmart and do whatever we have to do. Amen. But we got to remember the Lord and be faithful in that. Even with the little that we got. Amen. And God will bless us and turn us around. Amen. He'll prosper us. Those same ones, people will look at you. Hey, I thought you used to live in the projects. I thought, what happened? Amen. The Lord has blessed me. Amen. 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 How many of you are blessed? That is God's glory. God's blessed. Amen. Amen. And that's his desire for us. But we got to be obedient first. Amen. I'm going to ask the usher to come forward. Amen. And if you would... I'm going to give you an opportunity to give to the Lord with all your heart. Amen. Give your very best unto the Lord. Amen. And amen. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, and Nicholas is going to bless us with the special. Amen. Amen.
opportunity and the privilege to sow into your kingdom. Lord God, we pray that you bless the sower, Lord God, that they're faithful to give, Lord God. I pray you turn their circumstances around, Lord God. Cause them to prosper, Lord God, and cause them, Lord God, to understand, Father, just what it is, Lord God, to give and to sow seed, Lord God. And Father God, we're careful to give you glory, honor, praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. We'll go ahead and dismiss the kids, 10 and under. Amen. Go to your classes, be obedient. Amen. Let's welcome Pastor Vince, amen, as he comes with the word from the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. The shirt must have shrunk. 
told the Alex, I said, I'm just too tired. I said, if I'm just preaching. And I said, just come and unbutton my shirt real quick. Or, or what was I going to say? She goes to something about happy feet. There was a little penguin on there or something that had something around his neck. He was all blue. I said, so you call me a penguin? Black and white, I guess. Turn your Bibles to Matthew 28. Matthew chapter 28. I guess, oh. Title this um, answering the, the great the call of the Great Commission or answering the Great Commission. And if you don't know what the Great Commission is found here in Matthew 28 and verse number 19. It says, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit. He said, and teach them, uh, or teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Amen. Amen. Father, thank you for the word this morning. Thank you for the privilege and honor to preach it. Father, bless, Lord God, this, this morning, the, the hearer. Of this word, Lord God, let it go deep in their spirits. Let them never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Answering the, the great commission, the call. He said, go make disciples of all nations. You with me? Uh, Jesus never called us just to go make big churches or make churches. He called us to go make disciples. Amen. amen. And uh, uh, But he said, go ye which he's talking to us you with me yeah. he wasn't he wasn't necessarily just talking to the apostles or the or, or the the leaders of that time he was talking to us here yes. you with me and he was saying go out into your world and your world can be and don't get me wrong because i don't want you because many times i think we have the opposite effect we have a mentality of just pueblo for those of you that live in pueblo we have a mentality of this like the east side or Pueblo in general. And, and the, you know what I mean? We want to win our city for God. And you know what? And, and God wants to touch Pueblo. But God, I mean, have you ever seen a map of the world? Yeah. Pueblo, you couldn't find, you know, with a pinhead, you know, where Pueblo is compared to the world that's out there. You with me? The other day when I was in L.A., I was on the, we went, we went through L.A. and we went to a place called Manhattan uh, Beach or something. And we, we stopped there because the beach was right there. So we walked out there for just a minute. And we looked, and I was on this big pier there in Manhattan. Uh, I was looking, and I was looking at all the water, how far as it went. I'm a, I was amazed at God's goodness and God's, you know, His power. Is it God, you made all this? So that's heavy duty because I just thought you made 10th and Troy. <laughs> that's good and everywhere I went, it was amazing because there was people there. A lot of people. More people than Pueblo. Pueblo would be considered like a suburb of L.A. You with me? It was just a little part of L.A. Kind of like Aurora or Long, or you know some of these cities in Denver, but it's still considered Denver. But where you live? Well, on this side of Pastor Ray's Church is Denver. On that side, it's what? Uh, Lakewood, across the street. So you know, I tell people, yeah, I'm gonna walk over to Lakewood, get some coffee. <laughs> But the world that we live in is huge. Right. And there's people of all colors. I've seen black, I've seen Asian, a lot of Asian. You with me? Yeah. And a lot of different people, a lot of different cultures there. You know what I mean? And we're just used to here Pueblo. Amen? Yeah. And you got to realize that he wants us to go into all the world and preach the gospel. Yeah. But if you can't be faithful to where you're at, you'll never get out there. That's why I heard some of you guys are out preaching the gospel and handing out flowers. That's awesome. Be faithful in that. You with me? Because my friend used to tell me, I, I, I remember this guy told me, he said, man, I'm going to preach to thousands, bro. I had a vision of preaching to thousands, not one person. 
And I told him, brother, I said, have you ever went in your city and handed a flyer? Have you ever went and talked to somebody about Jesus? No. I said, how in the world do you think God's going to trust you with thousands if he can't trust you with one? Right. How are you going to share the gospel with thousands of people? Because see, it's a lot easier to do it that way right. when you're in a crowd. Jesus. And it's a lot harder to do it one-on-one, -on -one, you know what I mean? Because it's like, wow, they're really going to know if I'm for real or not. Because yeah. see, you can fake a lot of people. You with me? Yeah. But when it comes, you, you're dealing with somebody, you're talking about you were a heroin addict or this and that, somebody's a heroin addict, you better know what you're talking about. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. If you're a gang, ma gang member and you're in the gangs and doing this, you know, I mean, it's a different story saying it here in Pueblo and walking into the streets of L.A. Yeah. talking to homeboy, vato locos, and you're talking about I was in the gangs and this yeah. and that. Yeah. You know, they'll know whether you're real or not. Yeah. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. Big old mustaches, man, tatted up, and you're telling them your story. Yeah. You with me? See, I have nothing to be ashamed of when mine goes into the L.A. County Jail, because I know my God. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. I know my God, and my God has done great yeah. things for me. Yeah. Only God can do something like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I realize the scripture that says, you know, many are called, but few are chosen. Yeah. You with me? Amen. And sometimes, you know, I mean, I was thinking about it earlier that we, we have a tendency to expect everybody to be a chosen vessel, but I really believe that there's a separation there that God chooses. Yeah. You with me? See, because when we read the scriptures, like, well, uh, 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 Jeremiah 1, 4, or whatever it is, it says, well, you know what? I, I ordained you since I, I knew you since you were in your mother's yeah. womb. Yeah. I'm ordained you a prophet to the nations. You with me? A lot of times we have a tendency, and I, I you know, I mean, if, if it's in you, then, then receive it. Amen. If it's in you, receive it. Amen. You know what I mean? But it's like, it's not for everybody. Yeah. To be a prophet to the nations means I'm going to go preach to nations. Right, Jesus. You with me? Yeah. Not, you're going you're gonna to go to church, and, yeah. you know, the pastor has to encourage you to lift a hand. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know? And, and uh, but no, man. I know who my God is. I know who I serve. I know that He's able to do this. You with me? And you know it's on the inside. Robert, that's what I see in you. I don't see somebody that's coming to church and somebody's just here for, you know, to be blessed and hear a, good, hear a message and then you want to go home and live your life. And see, it's affected you, brother. You're addicted already. You're addicted to Jesus. And man, there's no more backwards ever again. Never, any, no, no rear view mirrors, always forward. Yeah. And, and, and when you look in rear view, it's always limited. Yeah. You can only see just a little bit of your past. And I think sometimes God will let you see that so you can tell people where he brought you from. Yeah. Yeah. But but before you, is just unlimited. It's like that ocean. It's just like, man, there's nothing God cannot do. If you just, but you need faith. You need faith continually to be inside you so you can accomplish those things. And it just he said, if you have faith, it's great of a mustard seed. And if you've ever seen a mustard seed, they're so small, you know what I mean? You're like, where is it? It's tiny. But he said, if you have faith that big, he says, you'll move mountains. You know what I mean? And, and you know what I mean? And, and that's it. We've got to keep looking forward and saying, man, God, I'm, I'm going to stretch my faith out. Amen. Amen. He, and, and he's commissioned us to do this. It wasn't, when I tell people, it wasn't the great suggestion. Yeah. It was the great commission. Amen. He commissioned us. He commanded us to go forward. He didn't say, oh, uh, ladies, if you get a time between the kids and your job and, and, and the laundry, make disciples. You with me? He said, if you, he said, go preach the gospel that your mops, moms of preschoolers, whatever, Right. Every opportunity, Jesus. those of you that are in school, those of you that are in college, every opportunity I had in college was about Jesus. Yeah. Every term paper, everything I wrote was about Jesus, was about God, was about what is the greatest accomplishment you ever wrote. Do you really want to know? When the day I accepted Jesus Christ in my heart as my personal Lord and Savior, my teachers are like, that's an A, man. Wow. Man. Well, come in here for a speech class and give a one of those speeches that you just kind of like you like you read off like a 
Uh, I don't know what they called it, but I went in there and said, I'm going to do this. I don't to do Psalms 23. They said, yeah. So I went in there and said, the Lord is my shepherd. Man, man, I shall man. not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. Do you with me? And, 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 and he leads me in the path of righteousness. And they're like, the people after, they can comment. And people are like, wow. You sounded like a preacher. <laughs> Really? No. <laughs> I didn't tell them anything about my life. I just, pff, here it is. Jesus. You with me? Man. Everything I did was for the gospel. Yeah. Every vacation or anything we ever took was to preach the gospel. Some of you got vacation times and this and that. We've got our conference coming up in May yeah. in Denver. I think it's May. I don't even know what the general conference dates are. But I think it's in April or May sometime. And I'll make sure I get it up there for you. Yeah. But, but it's like people take their vacations at the conference yeah. so that they can be there all three or four days, whatever it is, so you can go hear the word all day long yeah. and hear Pastor Ray and Pastor Ed, Pastor Mike, myself, uh, 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 Pastor Jesse that we went to his church, Pastor from Fresno, little Pastor Gilbert and other pastors from around the yeah. nation come and speak into your lives. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, no, I don't have time for that. I got business here in Pueblo, and I, you know what I mean? And think about it. You, how much, you know what I mean? That's the, that's the devil's way of keeping you down. Yeah. He don't want you to preach the gospel. He don't want you to share your faith. He don't want you to learn more because he's afraid you might break loose. Yeah. That fire might escape, and, and instead of a campfire, now it's a forest fire, and the whole city of Pueblo is on fire for God if they get what I'm, the, the pastor's preaching there. So keep sending them excuses. You with me? Yeah. Keep giving them reasons why they can't go to this or go to the men's conference because, while well, this came up and my wife got a cold so I have to stay home and give her chicken soup <laughs> and hold her hand and bring her a tissue. I think we have competent women in our church yeah. who would love to come and help do that. Yeah. Don't let the devil lie to you, man. He's lied to you long enough. That's right. You with me? Yeah. Make every effort, do whatever you got to do. Go sell some of the things you got. Right. Stuff you have that you don't even have need of. And some of the things you have, taking too much of your time anyway. Go get rid of them, pawn them, or sell them. Yes, so you know what, Pastor Nate? Here's that money, man. Yeah. I'm committed. Boom, there it is. Yeah, you with me? Yeah. And don't be coming later and say, well, you know what? Something came up, Pastor Nate. Can I have my money back? Because no, we're not doing that. Yeah, That's why we ask you for at least fifty dollars deposit, because you're not getting that back if you change your mind. Because we have too many people, Christians, yeah. who are always changing their mind at the yeah. last minute. Right. Right. I want to go on the women's thing, but no, I don't. I can't. Or something came up, and it always comes up for you. Yeah. Why you? On, and why are you even still in the same condition you've been in for the last 10, 20 yeah. years? Yeah. You with me? Yeah. Excuses. Right. You with me? Yeah. God ain't able. It's God Himself. The Almighty Creator of heaven and earth ain't able to come down and, and even change you because you don't let Him. And you have to let Him if He's going to do any work in you. Well, if He wants to, He can do whatever He wants. Yeah, He can, but He's limited Himself. He's limited Himself to your will. What you want God to do, He'll do in your life. And what you withhold God to do, He, he, he is... He, he's, you with me? Yep. He's unable to do it in your life. Amen. Jesus Christ himself, if you read the New Testament, throughout the New Testament, he would go to cities and they brought all their sick and he healed every one of them. Amen. But in his own community, in his own city, he went and they said that he couldn't even heal a few, but just for a few colds or something like that, he just healed just a couple because of their unbelief. Jesus. Because of, of that, they, they, they thought, isn't this the carpenter's son? Right. They familiarized God. Some of you have familiarized God to the to limit yourself to, to, to the work and the access God has in your life. Right. Because you're like, I already went to church. I already know that you're going to preach a message. You're going to do the women's is the same and prayer is the same. I already know. And it's like you got it all together. You don't even need God. Jesus. Why don't you go start your own cult or your own thing and you be the God of that thing and see how far you go. Amen. God will laugh at you. Amen. Because whether you understand it or not, you need more of God than you can understand or comprehend. You need more. And you're thinking, gee, I'm doing so much already. And you want to pat yourself on the back of how you're doing. And God says, you got to run after me. you got to run after me if you want me. You can't be there. He said, how are you going to run with horses if you can't even keep up with men? I don't know about 
about you, but I don't want to do the natural. I don't want to be able to keep up running with Pastor Nathan because he's thin and he's faster than me. I don't want to, I want to outrun horses, baby. I want to see me down I-25 like I go to the conference. What the? Uh, like, man, whoa, there goes Pastor man, he out around the car. How oh, supernatural. You with me? Amen. Because we're trusting in the Lord. You with me? Some trust in chariots, some in horses. You trust in your own things. But he said, I will remember the name of the Lord, my God. I'm not limiting myself to any man or any person or any organization or anything. I'm, I'm trusting in the Lord with everything I have. Because I want to see God do great things. you got to understand how selfish it is for you to want to keep your gospel to yourself. Right. How selfish is that of you? Yeah, right. To want to just have Jesus there in your, in your heart and at your house. I don't need to go to church. You with me? I don't need to go do this. I don't need to be a part. I don't need to do this. And you're still locked up. And you're limiting God and what God wants to do in your life. Yeah. God wants to do great things in you. He wants to use you beyond your wildest dreams. I would have never seen the things I saw in my life had I stood in church like some of you and just say, well, whatever. Try it, man. Whatever God wants to do. And it's like, no, God put dreams in your heart. Amen. God put visions inside of you. Amen. God says, what do you have in your heart? He says, you delight in me. I'll give you the desires of your heart. Some of you, he's put these dreams and you know, I mean, to, to go do this or maybe to go to a third world country one day and, and, and preach in Africa. Amen. You with me? Amen. You got to count the cost for things like that. Right. You with me? Because every time we went on this, this trip, every time there was a delay, every time there was something, <coughs> I thought, man, I called him from New Mexico when we first went last Wednesday. And I was like, how's the weather over there? It's nice. It's all right. Kind of gloomy, but it's, it's nice. Over here is all right. So I thought, hey, let's go. And little did I know, my wife says, isn't there, like, Raton Pass? I said, baby, we're not going through Raton. She says, well, isn't there a pass that way? I said, no. <laughs> Nothing. Just, no. I mean, it's, all, uh, you know, uh, Fort Garland and San Luis and that way, and we're there. Yeah. And, well, I forgot, La Vida Pass. Yeah. Yeah. And we were beautiful. It was beautiful all the way, and then all of a sudden went white. <laughs> and went, I mean, to where you can make it up the mountain. And I'm like, oh, my God. I wondered if we were going to have to turn around or what. Jesus. But see, God said to go. Yeah. And see, you'll never know unless you go. Yeah. And when we got to La Vida, we started going out. And it was like, oh, wow. And Julio just kept that gas going, man. We're going out. I'm thinking, thank you, Jesus, for guardian angels. Thank you for yeah. 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 leading our paths. And all of a sudden, you know what I mean? It started getting worse. And there was a, a big snow plow. And the snowplow went, it's like we were coming, and he went right in front of us, and all the way up, man, just, I said, look, we got our own angel here in the snowplow, just leading the way over this mountain, and it was far, and it was long, icy and everything, but he was leading the way all the way down the mountain, and when it became clear and nice, he turned off like that, and I was like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Man, because we're not prepared for things like that. And all the way there was snow. I thought, how does it snow? We didn't snow Pueblo. <laughs> Come on now, Pueblo ain't it. <laughs> Pueblo ain't all the world. Amen. Pueblo's, a, you know, it's limited. There's only 100,000, 120,000 in this whole Pueblo County. You with me? And it's like, but there's snow other places. There's life other places. I met people in Cuesta. You know what I mean? When we got a blowout on the way back. On a mountain pass. You know what I mean? Our tire... The tread came off like it has before, and, and we're there, man, and we pulled over trying to jack this thing up with a jack that didn't work. Me and Naomi were lifting a, that 15 passenger man, and lift! We lifted it up on top of the jack and finally got it up for it to fall over, and boom, there goes the jack flying, and the Indian man, cop is there, and he's like, <laughs> I knew that wasn't going to work. <laughs> He's in his car all warm, we're frozen, our hands all in. <laughs> Wait till I see Manuel. <laughs> oh, man. Because then he gave us a jack that don't work, man. And that guy's in there all warm, man. And he's like, man, just. He says, it's all right, it's just a tread, follow me in. And we go up a mountain, man, cold, you know what I mean? Pum, 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 the whole way, 10 miles an hour, 
Lord. And I'm thinking, Lord, you're so good. Because it's things like this that happen every time we do something. But it's part of the journey. Some of the snags, some of the things you hit in your life is part of the journey. You with me? Wow, I, you know, I got married, but I never thought this. And we are arguing, and this is part of the journey, baby. You with me? Oh, we have kids and look, they're so cute and so good. Oh, babe, we have no more diapers. I don't know what to do, babe. I have no more money. Part of the journey. Yeah. Throw a towel on them. I don't know what to say. Nobody wants to tell. Throw it on them. Let's go. But we can't go to church now, babe. Throw a toallita. Let's go, man. So they'll, they'll understand. When you get to church and somebody might say, hey, did you need diapers? I got some. Extra. Because God always provides. God always there. But you'll never know unless you know. You with me? Well, I don't know. You see, some of you don't realize every time you miss a service or you miss prayers, you're missing a piece of what God has for you. So when you get to heaven, your puzzle is going to be, you know how you ever made a puzzle? You're going to have all kinds of pieces missing because you were selfish. And you wanted to do what you felt like doing. Come on, church. You wanted to give when you wanted to. You wanted to help when you wanted to. And when you did and all them pieces are missing, you're going to look. And it's going to be cool, but you're going to be like, well, what was there? Because there's a whole section gone. Oh, that's when I, 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 I had issues with somebody at church. <laughs> you with me? When we went to, when we came back from uh, 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 LA or from New Mexico, we came back, took a shower, threw our clothes on, put our stuff in a bag, and went to the airport in in, in Denver to fly to Vegas. And there's always now uh, we're excited. That there's an hour delay for the play. Oh man! And, and, I, and all of a sudden, I said, God, I'm not gonna complain or anything. I just put my headphones on, put some desperation band on, started walking around, getting my words and you know, prepare me for this message tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, uh, you know what I mean? Get, get in the spirit. Yeah, yeah. You with me? Yeah. Take those times and opportunities to bless God and to pray and to yeah. seek and not complain and yeah. get mad and then start cussing and everything. Yeah. Yeah. This shows the level of our maturity in Christ. Yeah. Yeah. You with me? And some of us got to get our lives together. We got to get our act together here. Because every one of those is like a black mark against us. It's like a, you with me? It's like a, a hindrance to our ministry. God wants to do great things in our lives. He said, go preach, go make disciples. A disciple is somebody you take under you, Brother Robert, and you begin to teach them, just like you do with your kids. Come here, let me, hun, let me come here, let me show you the scripture. But well, you don't realize you're discipling them. And since when you begin, hey, babe, I look what I found, I found the script, check this out. Disciples said, hey, come here, grandkids. Look, I, I come in here. My granddaughter's there. I said, come on, baby, lift those hands. Come on, give it to Jesus. She starts doing this and that. You know what I mean? It's like, man, discipleship. You with me? Teaching her how to praise God, teaching her what it is. And she gets the spirit and she'll take off running. You with me? Hey, man, she ain't there with her PlayStation. <laughs> <laughs> during praise and worship, yeah. during the word, Man. Yeah. playing her games and this and that, and you don't realize you guys are losing your children. Right. You don't realize you're losing them to technology and to the things the devil put it there. Right. I'm not saying that's the devil that you can't play a game, but I'm saying in church, nothing right. comes over here. Right. This ain't your house, and this ain't the, we're going to entertain them by sticking them in front of a computer or in front of a game for two hours while I clean house or whatever it is. Why don't you try discipling those children? Why don't you have a time of Bible study where you take and actually study and get your little message ready and then call your kids in and, and, and then preach to them? Do something exciting, something fun, and games and balloons, and uh, you know, pie in the face. Oh, you missed the scripture. Oh, wow. but that's good, though. You with me? And you make the gospel something to be grasped, something that even kids can understand, that they'll want to do it. You with me? I mean, when we went to New Mexico, man, we had, we had, it, it was so awesome. But Friday night, we did our youth rally, and it was so amazing. We had an altar call. But after the altar call, you know what I mean? They said, hey, pastor, because see, I did what God sent me to do. But now they're like, hey, pastor, the youth want to show you something. And I was like, well, I went over there, and brother, guess what they did? They put on some music, and they, <laughs> and they started downing, and they were spinning. 
You know what I mean? And I got a video of one of them, just a little short, chunky one. But he got out there, you know, their kids were doing their thing, and he got out there and just ran in place. And, and I said, go for it, baby, do it. Come on, because you're willing to do it. God will bless you. You don't have to look a certain way or, 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 or anything. Guess what? God loves you. Praise him with your feet. Bless him. Naomi talked in the story about a guy who was in New Mexico, went up, and I seen him at first, and he was in Benito's house, and he was just kind of rocking there, and I knew something was wrong, but I didn't know what it was, because his hands kept doing this, but he, and then he, I, I knew he was blind when I started to hear some of the things, and see some of the things, and, 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 and I thought, well, this guy's blind, so they took the cane, and they go, oh, you wait till he plays, what? <laughs> Yeah, I taught him how to play the guitar and the drums, and he, he knows how to play the keyboard, and I'm like, no way. He got up there, he led praise and worship like Naomi does. Just, and he's just said, uh, what's that song? Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? The God of angels army is right here by my side. And the drummers are the youth drummers going playing and this 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 blind guy led us in worship. Most of the time we're in there. You with me? And then he goes, show him on the guitar. He goes, Pastor, you want to say? I said, I want to say. And, and then I was like, who's here? Are you with me? He said, I, or something. And he said, I, 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 what did he say? I see you, Pastor. I see you. I go, as long as Jerome, J Jamal sees me, I don't care about the rest of y'all. He would, he would, you know what I mean? They call us with us. You know, and, and, and but, but it was so amazing. The, the, what, what God will do if you're willing to step out in faith, the people will meet. The connections, the, the networking the, with people that you would have never known before because you're staying home and you got some things to clean. And how, how, how much can you clean your house? You with me? Some of you that are going to clean, they're spotless. You go in, it's like, man, no, no, but I got to vacuum again. And some of you go in and say, man, you need to vacuum, sister. <laughs> My wife, yeah, I was nervous. I thought I was cleaning their house. <laughs> and it ain't because you spend time with Jesus either. Right. Like you're Mary, oh, I was at his feet. I was seeking the Lord. Where are you sleeping the whole day? You know, clean the house and get some tracks and go preach. Yeah, you with me? Yeah. He said, make disciples, discipline learners. Yeah. Teach them what you know. He says, baptize them in the name of the Father. And it wasn't just a physical baptism. It was bringing them into the church, bringing them into your lifestyle. Amen. He said, teach them to obey. Amen. Teach them to what? Obey. To obey. You know why? Because we're rebellious by nature. Yeah. You ever seen that band, Naughty by Nature? Yeah. That's you. Yeah. That's me. Right. Naughty by nature, rebellious by nature. So did he say I was rebellious? I ain't rebellious. Why are you telling me? Well, you're probably the one. You with me? The rest of you are all just, man, I know, Pastor. I could be a handful, man. And I, need, I need work, man. Jesus, help me, Lord God. I don't want to be rebellious. I don't want to be obedient. And you see things happen in your life, and your boss tells you something, you get all mad and throw a trash can. Why did I? And you know what I mean? And God's like, are you really going to act like that? No, I'm sorry, Lord. That's right. I'm sorry, man. That's hey, right. boss, I'm sorry for the maybe giving you an attitude yeah. and stuff. You know what I mean? And see, God's working on you. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. Why? Because that rebellious nature. I don't want to. What, you ain't going to tell me what to do. You with me? Yeah. Amen. I tell people it's easy to serve the Lord when you're single. Yeah. Then get married. <laughs> Honey, you're going to go with them guys again and play video games? And, no, shut up! Don't tell me nothing! Why? Because you're rebellious by nature. No woman's going to tell me, you're supposed to shut up and submit. But, but you got to understand, that's to a God-fearing, Holy Ghost-loving, God-seeking man. You with me? Sometimes my wife have to check me. You with me? And I understand that. And I give her that opportunity. Go ahead and tell me when I'm wrong. Tell me when. And sometimes she does have to come. Sorry. <laughs> Can I come in? Open the door. <laughs> Sorry. You taught me my lesson. <laughs> so 
some men will be on the couch all mad. I eat have to be pets. No way. Yeah, yeah. All stupid. I'm just kidding. That's true. And that's where they'll stay out on the couch. You with me? God never meant for that to happen. He said the two will become one flesh. You with me? We submit to one another. And there's times I have to check my wife and tell her, you know what, the way you acted, you shouldn't have done that. That was wrong. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, I mean, I have to tell her that. And sometimes she'll, she'll you know, have to tell her, wait a minute, this is distinguished. This is your pastor speaking, not your husband. Yeah. I'm your pastor now. Don't, don't do that. You with me? Yeah. Now I'm your husband. Go ahead. You can tell me. Or <laughs> So my mom she tells me, we ain't at church now, son. <laughs> oh, you're my equal. You're my, hijo. You're my son. <laughs> yes, mom. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but we're too. He said, teach him to obey. That's what I'm trying to do to you now. I'm trying to teach you to obey. Not what I say. Not because I'm the dictator and I'm the, the pastor here. And you're going to shut up and obey. Because I can't make you. You with me? I mean, it, you, I can't do that. This ain't a gang. You with me? To where the toughest takes the, 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 the role. You know what I mean? This ain't like that. It's, you know what I mean? If anything, it's the most humble will take that role of a leader. Yeah. So you know what I'm telling you for your own benefit? I don't have to listen to you, Pastor. Yeah. You come in here and you pray and say, God help that sister. God help her. Forgive her, Lord. You don't know what she's saying when she talks about us. He said, in blessing, I'll bless you. He said, in cursing, I'll curse them. Amen. You with me? He said, don't touch my anointed, nor do my prophets no harm. You with me? I tell people, you know what I mean? You got to be careful what you're saying. I mean, you know what I mean? It's like I said, many are called, but few, few are chosen. You with me? And I believe it, and I don't say it by any means to Amen. brag or boast, but God chose me Amen. to Amen. preach the gospel. Amen. You with me? Amen. And you can see it. You can see it with confirmation with what God does when we preach and what God does when we're, when we're ministering and stuff like that. You can see the fruit. Amen. You with me? It ain't me up here saying, you know what, hey, Try. look at me, I've done this, and then it's like, Try. you know, nothing. You know, because yeah. God knows what he's doing. Yeah. And when I tell you, you know, things like this, it's not to, so I can control you by any means. Right. It's so that I can help you become a man of God. Because, see, I want to see one day, maybe, you know, and, and, and it's always been a dream to have new hope here and then maybe a new hope on the west side. Amen. You with me? Amen. And have two churches in Pueblo. Amen. Amen. And, and, and have them going powerful to it. Not some Amen. church that I could say, we started a second church in Pueblo. Yeah. God's really moving. You go in there, both dead. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't nothing happening. Amen. Nobody getting saved. No lives are being changed. Amen. You with me? Amen. Amen. I want a second one. Amen. 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 Who, who knows? Springs don't have a new hope. That's right. Amen. Where's the next pastor? Can you be here? Amen. 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 But, you know what I mean? And there's some new hope ministries in Trinidad, but it ain't us. Yeah. You can put new hope on the door or whatever, but it's the gifts and callings inside yeah. that's going to make the difference. Yeah. Yeah. People will try to affiliate because of the name, and the name don't make the difference. You with me? There's a lot of people who come through Pastor Ray's ministry, a lot of men who have come through there even to preach the gospel and stuff, and we've kind of been like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. David out in the field over there in Pueblo. Yeah. You with me? But it's like, you know what? But God has called us. Right, man. And you know what? 15 years later, guess what? Pastor Ray looks down I-25, and there we are. Right, man. David over here in the field. Yeah, yes. Just He said, what are you doing? Pastoring a few sheep. Right. Well, you got to remember, there was greatness in David, though. Yeah. Yeah. You with me? There was greatness in him, kingship. Yeah. You with me? And because in, I really believe it. God said, if you can be faithful, son, with a handful of these people, I'll make you roar over much. Yeah. See, when I preach, I told you before, I said, when I preach, I preach to, like, if I'm preaching to thousands of people, because I don't change. Amen. And God told me, he said, if you can learn to preach to 10 people the way you would preach to 10,000, I'll bless you. Yeah. And that's why I do what I do. I, you know, I preach this way at Pastor Ray's church, Amen. and he's got 500 or 1,000 people. Amen. You with me? I don't change. If I go to, over here and there's a handful of people that show yeah. up, right, man. I'm going to preach just the same. I ain't there to impress people. I'm there to preach the gospel. Yeah. Confirm your, your word, Lord, with signs and wonders following. Yeah. You with me? 
make disciples, teach them, baptize them, bring them into what God's doing, teach them to obey, because we want to run like wild stallions, man, you used to run all over, like a, like a alley cat, right? You can't tame alley cats, God can though, you can't tame mustangs, but you can break them, you with me? When God gets a hold of you, some of you are like wild mustangs, have you ever seen the horses that run the mountains? Nobody can get him, but when you capture him, you bring him in. See, his love captured you, brought you in, and now he's breaking you. Because you wanted to do your thing and go with whoever you wanted and give it to whoever you wanted and act the way you wanted. And God's like, I'm breaking you. Man. And it's never fun. Watch them horses being tamed. They put ropes on them, and they're, they, they do all these different stuff to break them Man. to where they can be rideable. And you get on, and you're like, come on. Let's go. And they're not going to throw you, and they're not going to run wild with you. They're going to be obedient so that I can, the master can use you to do what God has called him to do. You with me? Jeremiah said, he told him, go to the potter's house, and I want to show you a work that I'm doing. And he said, there's a, there's a pottery on the, on the wheel. He said, he's forming a pot. And it had Mars. It had all these things and problems and issues. And, and God said, so I had to crush it and break it and start all over again. A new lump. Amen. You with me? Right. And I'm telling you what, you can do your own thing, act a fool, behave the way you want to, but God will break you if he, if he really has called you. Amen. You with me? Amen. I, I told people, God won't make, they say, God won't make you. And I used to say it. God won't make you do what you want to do. If you're chosen of God, I said, that's Jonah. You can go do whatever you want to do, but guess what? No matter where you go, it might be a prison cell. <laughs> Swallow you up for not three days and three nights, but three years and three months. Swallow you up there and you're in the prison. And right there, God says, see, you didn't want to listen to pastor, but here, get your word out. Study your word. Get yourself ready. You got three years, baby. Three years of Bible college in prison. Get in there. Seek my face. Start ministering to your people in here, to the prisoners and the image. Set them free. Preach the gospel. You come out of there on fire because you didn't want to listen the first time, but God will get you. He has a way of swallowing you up, Jonah. How many Jonas we have? You want to do God's yeah. will, but your way. Yeah. Right, amen. Pastor says do something, or even God will tell you do something. No, I don't feel like doing that. Yeah. God will say, go ahead and do what you want to do, but I'm going to swallow you up. Yeah. I don't know why these issues are coming up. We can't pay our rent. We can't do this. We can't yeah. do that. Things ain't working. All we do is fight. And all this whoo, swallow you up. Amen. Until you have nowhere to go. Until that husband won't make you think if, you know what I mean? Uh, he'll, you'll look and say, man, he can't do nothing for me. Right, man. You with me? Man. You think, man, you know, man, I thought he could hold me. Or do that, man, you know, he's holding somebody else. Yeah, yeah. Right. There right. you are on your face before God. Right. And God's like, finally, now I can change you. Right, now I can work on because <laughs> your, God, your husband was your God for a long time. Amen. You with me? Amen. Amen. You ever want to hear a story? Talk to my mother about that. Yeah. My dad, awesome man, handsome. You with me? Uh, from Mexico, young, vibrant. And she loved him with all her heart. But she tells this story and says, God said, oh, you can't have anybody before me. My dad was killed when I was four months old in a car accident. And there she was, her whole life crashed. You with me? Yeah. Yeah. So you, you, you got to hear her story and let her tell you her testimony about how God had to bring her through that. Right, man. You with me? Yeah. And you know what's a trip is that sometimes, you know, I mean, you can go on and, and, and with your life and marry somebody else and this and that. But every time I talk and every time I say something or she hears something or, or something, she'll say, that reminds me of your dad. Right. Because that, you with me? Yeah. It's yeah. like that love, you know what I mean? It can't be, even death can't separate it. Right. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. But it's like, you know what? God says you can't have nobody before me. Right. Those of you that are married, I preach on marriage. I tell yeah. you, husbands, you love them wives. Don't you treat them bad. Yeah. You treat them like queens. You treat them the way you would want to be treated. Yeah. And then yeah. some, and honor them, and, and take care. But you hus wives can't be disrespecting your husbands and treating them like they're your children. Yeah. Yelling at them and correcting them and this and that. If they're your husband, then you better uh, uh, respect them yeah. as you would. Oh, I love you, Jesus. Jesus, shut up! You tell him. And you know what you're doing when you say anything you say to him, you're saying to God. 
That's it. You can use that as a mirror to reflect your love for God. Was I mean? Was I rude to my wife? Did I treat her like trash? Then look at my relationship with God is not very good. God, I need to get to the altar and get it right with you. Did I disrespect my husband? Did I tell him something? Did I yell at him in front of people? Did you ever do that? Makes your husband feel like this big and no wonder he wants to run from you. You with me? You honor that man. You lift him up, not break him down. It's not your job to break him. It's God's. Amen. You with me? Amen. But it's a reflection of how you build relationship with You can sing the song. You can do all that. Praise God at church and this and that. And at home you're a different woman. And no wonder they don't get saved. No wonder they don't change. God said true evangelism. For those of you women who don't have husbands serving the Lord. He said true evangelism is to show them the love of God inside of you. Show them the glory of God inside of you. And love them into the kingdom of God. You with me? Amen. Amen. And, and But that's the whole purpose. That's the whole reason Jesus came was to seek and save the lost. Jesus. He came to save sinners. Thank you, Jesus. He didn't come to make churches. Thank you, you with me? Thank he came to save sinners. And churches were formed because a bunch of people were getting saved who God had changed their lives and they needed a place to go. Like the people need a bar. Say, hey, you want to go to the club? I don't need to, bro. I, I'll go to church. Amen. I used to go there because see, I, I needed that. But that's like down here, and serving the Lord's up here. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you can go over there with the cockroaches and stuff like that. I'm, I'm going to go with the eagles. I'm going to soar on eagles. Wing. I'm going where there's light and not darkness. I'm going where there's praises of God, not praises of the devil and demons and all them songs that are they're grinding and bouncing and backing things up to. I'm going where I can lift Jesus higher and God will work, work in my life. I don't need that no more. You want a beer? I don't need that. You got some water? No. Pepsi Max? <laughs> I don't need that, bro. You with me? Never said that you'll never be tempted. No. Never said that flesh won't be like, mm, that, that tastes good. as a little bit of lemon or lime and some salt. I rebuke you, devil. That's my past. Yeah. No more, Lord. Put some salt and some stuff in your water and lemon and make a lemonade like my wife. So thank you, Jesus. Huh? Not salt, but sugar. Man. Lemonade. Drink it. And thank you, Lord. You with me? But God's doing something new in your life. But you can't just think that church is it. This is powerful. This is awesome what God's doing here. And you need to come here. Amen. Matthew chapter 10, uh, uh, he sends them out, right? He sends out his disciples. Let's go there real quick. Matthew 10, but because, because before there was a sending out, there was a preparation. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm almost done, so don't, don't get mad. So man, this dude, listen, what I got to give you is life here. Man, right. Amen. I ain't here wasting your time, believe right. me. Amen. Things you're hearing this morning, you don't hear a lot of places. Amen. They want to tickle your ears and tickle yeah. your fancy and whatever else they tickle. <laughs> I'm here to preach the word to you. Because I want, I want you to become like Christ. In verse, uh, chapter 10, he said, Then he called his twelve disciples to himself, or to him, and he gave them authority. Remember? Well, if you would have read Matthew 28, 18, he said, All authority in heaven and earth has been yeah. given to me. And he yeah. gave his disciples authority here. Amen? Amen. To drive out evil spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. Amen. 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 And, and, and he called them to go preach the gospel. Tell them the good news. He said, cast out devils and, and heal the sick. Amen. You with me? That's what he called us to do. To preach the gospel to the unsaved. To teach the, the message of the word of God to the saved. And to, and to heal those who are sick and oppressed of the devil. That's what he called us to do. He anointed them. Because see, and I didn't want to go through because of time, but, but, but if you go from, because remember, uh, 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 he called his disciples in, in chapter 4, in chapter 5 through 7 in the Bible school, we learned that that's the, that's Jesus, that's one message. Chapter 5 through 7 was one message of Jesus. So he said, man, why can't you give us 20 minutes? <laughs> I like 20 minute messages. I, I, I don't know what to say. If you're in love with somebody, you know what I mean, in, in, a, in, a, in a, you're dating and you're just absolutely in love, you're like, 20 minutes, yeah, I'm sorry, thanks, we'll see ya. <laughs> you're like, man, I gotta stay, oh man, love, you talk, I love you too. Really? 
Oh man, that's so awesome. The sun's coming out. You don't care. Like, oh man, you ain't thinking, man, I gotta go to work in 30 minutes. You're like, man, I don't wanna. You hang up. No, you hang up. Okay. You get up first. I don't wanna hang up on you. And you don't know, man, you can get in the shower real quick and get to work. You're in love. <laughs> And they heard Jesus, man. They stood there for hours and hours man. and listened to the Word of God because there's something about Him. Man. They weren't there worried about Some preachers want to give you 20 minutes. Right, man. You with me? Yeah. Somebody told me this week, they said, I said, how long do I got to go? Why don't you can preach a good solid, uh, oh, 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> You're limiting me here. You're limiting me. 30 minutes, he goes, 35, you know what I mean? Whatever, the spirit. <laughs> An hour later, we're done with the altar call, and people were blessed and crying and excited, and, and it was like, I'm sorry, <laughs> went over a little bit. And that's the short message. <laughs> I don't have three other scriptures besides that one. <laughs> He called his disciples and said, go out and heal them. Cast the devil out. Yeah, that's right. Some of our families are infested with demons. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You with me? You have power. Yeah. If you've accepted Jesus Christ, you have power. Yeah. You, you have the power to cast the devils out of them in Jesus' name. You with me? You see them all jacked up, all messed up. Lay your hands on them. I rebuke you, Satan. Yeah. You spirit of alcoholism, I curse you. You're no longer welcome in our home. Yeah. I break in God. He's, he's saved me to break this curse in our family. Yeah. Drug addiction, you.